The great oyster grounds of the Chesapeake are nearly empty now, wiped out by overfishing and by two deadly diseases. That's the sound of a dead oyster. Yep. That hollow sound. I mean, you can actually see the hollow shells in there if you look, but you can also hear it. You know, it sounds like castanets. Both diseases, MSX disease and dermo, they're here to stay. Stan Allen is a biologist, an old-fashioned bucket biologist, who believes he can beat both these killer diseases. He's been on the job for 12 years now. But MSX and Dermo have been here for more than 50 years. They have a head start. But Stan has a plan. We really have to change the nature of the wild oyster to be more disease resistant. Stan's plan goes like this. Build a better oyster for the bay. And do it before time runs out. Minnesota, Iowa, Nebraska, Missouri, Illinois, Indiana, Michigan, New York, Pennsylvania, Maryland, North Carolina, South Carolina, Florida, Alabama, Oklahoma, and California. Mm -hmm. California. Oysters from the Chesapeake went everywhere in America. The great shucking houses of Maryland and Virginia used to ship Chesapeake oysters all across the country. But the best oyster shuckers are nearly gone now. Only a few shucking houses are still working, and most of the oysters they shuck these days don't come from the Chesapeake anymore. They are shipped here for shucking from other states, most of them from Gulf states like Louisiana, where an oil spill has closed many oyster farms. Something major needs to be done. We're trying to hold on to something that we're hoping that's going to come back. Alan begins with the best oysters. Stan's plan, pick out the big, fast-growing oysters. These oysters grew here on the tidal flats where MSX and Dermo were killing many oysters, but not these oysters. They carry in their chromosomes some of the keys to beating disease, traits that keep them growing fast while other oysters are dying off. To capture those traits in a hatchery, Alan uses strip spawning scrape out sperm from male oysters, then eggs from females. Now I've got basically a pure suspension of eggs without any tissue or on any other junk. And furthermore, I, when I, I'll just add sperm to this to make the cross and it'll be done. By adding sperm from the best males to eggs from the best females, Alan is speeding up nature passing on traits from one generation to the next. Essential piece of scientific apparatus, French invention. By mixing them together, Alan can breed a new generation of baby oysters. They will grow faster than their parents did, giving them better chances of beating disease. Doing selective breeding is a sort of a slow, plodding, 
methodology. That, but it's clear that oysters can be domesticated to become more disease resistant. Without a new oyster for the Chesapeake, oysters from other states will have to be shipped in for shucking in Maryland and Virginia. An expensive proposition. The millions of dollars that are lost in revenue in these two states, it's, it's unbelievable. My hope was to raise our own oysters and be able to shuck our own oysters off of our own private beds. We need a change of what that change needs to be. Uh, we're leaving it up to the scientists. Part two of Stan's plan. Bring an invented oyster into the Chesapeake. An oyster he first introduced on the West Coast more than 20 years ago. The new oyster Alan invented was a triploid. An oyster packed with extra chromosomes. In lower animals and invertebrates, it's possible to manipulate the number of chromosome sets that, that animals have. Almost all sexually reproducing animals are diploid. They have two sets of chromosomes. Nature's oysters are diploids with two sets of 10 chromosomes that add up to 20 chromosomes in all. We can actually produce oysters that have three sets of chromosomes. Stan Allen's oysters are triploids with three sets of 10 chromosomes, adding up to 30 chromosomes in all. With extra chromosomes, these triploid oysters grow extra fast. Good morning, Mark. So we have 60,000 this morning, and we'll put them in bags, get them overboard with the other 35,000. Sounds good. We're going to have a busy day. The last step in Stan's plan. Try triploids in the Chesapeake using native triploid oysters planted by local oyster farmers. We've been planting seed oysters in this river. When you plant oysters, it's like gambling all the time, it's especially now. Since the mid-80s, the oysters have really started to decline. We have the wonderful oyster bottoms and the Chesapeake and all its tributaries. It's a shame for all this vacant bottom uh, to be sitting there and not cultivated uh, and, and put to use. In field trials with oyster farmers, Allen's triploids grew fast so fast they could be harvested well before MSX or Dermo could rope? kill them all. So. Stan Allen finally had an oyster that could beat disease. So they're pretty nice oysters. I mean, they're highly marketable, and uh, since they're triploid, they're marketable in the summertime. So, uh, you know, these are Selectively breeding for a super oyster, it's absolutely the right thing to do, to domesticate the species, to make it a super oyster, to enable aquaculture and commercial investment in the bay. Oyster harvest in the Chesapeake Bay will be aquaculture in the future. I can think of multi-million dollar industries being based in the bay. Foreign. I mean, I'm an optimistic person. I'd peg all my um, optimism on, on aquaculture working. Oysters thrive in the bay. <laughs>